Hey, what's up? It's no secret that I love motion lights. And I'm gonna show you how to level them up with some really easy things that you can do that I'm gonna show you in this video. So the first thing that we'll be using is ultrasound in all of the round echo devices, both the dot and the bigger echo. And the reason that we're using ultrasound instead of the motion sensor is that ultrasound is a little more accurate at mapping out the room and seeing if someone is still in the room or not but there's a few things that you might need to tweak and be aware of for the ultrasound. So if you go into the settings of the Echo device, you can click on ultrasound motion detection. And here you can adjust the sensitivity and the range. I recommend leaving these both on high. Yes, if you adjust it, it does change the sensitivity and range, but leaving it on high is just gonna give you a lot better results and it's difficult to actually measure it and test it. I found it best just on high. The other thing that you'll need to be aware of is there is a 30 minute delay for it to say that there is no one in the room. So if you want your lights to turn off fast, like if you've only been out of the room for a few minutes and you want the lights to turn off to save energy, you might not want to use this, but this will be more accurate if you're hanging out in the room for a while and not moving around a lot. So that's all great, but the automations in the Amazon app are a little limited. So we're going to take that ultrasound capability and bring it into SmartThings and Home Assistant so that we can make better automations. And the way that we're gonna do that is by creating virtual switches that we can turn on and off in the Amazon app using a routine. And then we can use those switches in automations in SmartThings or Home Assistant to make them even better. So let me show you how to do that. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna be mainly focusing on SmartThings is we're going to take smart things and we're going to create a virtual switch and things have kind of changed from a few years ago ever since smart things has been changing and you're going to need to add this driver and when you add it you'll have the ability to create virtual switches that can be pulled into the amazon app because you can't just create any virtual switch it has to be a specific one so the way it works is you'll click on this little link and it will add it to your smart things account and then you'll just want to follow the steps on how to add a virtual switch. And let me show you how to do that. It's a little tricky, but once you see what to do, it's not too bad. So you'll see this V Edge Creator V2.9. If you have an older version, you might need to update. So you select that. And then the only thing you need to do is select and create virtual devices, that little cog, and then select Alexa switch. And when you do this, it's going to create a virtual switch. So you do that and it says creating a device, one created, and it's gonna go into either no rooms assigned or the room that your hub is located. I have my SmartThings hub in a room called hallway and then you'll see it right there, V edge, Alexa switch three and it's off. So this is now gonna be pulled into the Amazon app because I have SmartThings added to Amazon and so I can create a routine in Amazon to control this. So let me show you how to do that. Go to routines and you're gonna select new routine. When this happens, select smart home, go down to your echo dot, mine's called studio dot, select it. And then when people are detected, so this is gonna use the ultrasound, click next. And then what you're gonna do is for the action, select smart home, switches Alexa switch three that we just created we're going to turn it on so when someone is detected by ultrasound it will turn on that switch and then we would just need to create another routine to turn off the switch if no one is detected by ultrasound so once you do this you don't really have to go into the amazon routines anymore you can just stay in smart things and then you'll have access to the ultrasound being on or off because you'll know by that virtual switch if it's on or off. The reason you would even wanna make this virtual switch and bring in that ultrasound into SmartThings or Home Assistant is so that you can have some more advanced features like fading off the lights instead of just turning them off quickly or having multiple motion sensors and only turning off the lights if none of the motion sensors and that ultrasound see anyone. So let's start off first with fading off the lights. And I'm gonna bring up Home Assistant because I have my SmartThings connected to Home Assistant 
So it brings in that virtual device that I just created. In Home Assistant, I have the trigger as the virtual edge switch that we just created. And when that turns off, we're gonna turn off the lights as well. So we're gonna create an action. And instead of just choosing device and turning off the lights, we're gonna choose call service and we're gonna have the lights fade off. So I'm gonna type in light, it's light.turn off, and then you select transition and you select how long. So I like to do 15 or 20 seconds. That's a good amount of time. It's not too fast or too slow because if it's too slow, you might not notice it. You cannot really do this, or at least I don't think you can in smart things or Amazon routines. If you know how to, just let me know down in the comments. So another thing you can do is have multiple motion sensors to keep the lights on. So you could have one by the door when you walk in to turn on the lights and another motion sensor by your desk to keep the lights on. But you have to make sure that the conditions are set right to keep the lights on. Let me show you how to do it in smart things first. Make sure you have two conditions, one for each motion sensor in the same automation for when they don't detect motion anymore. And then make sure when all conditions below are met is selected, not when any condition below is met. So that way they both have to stop detecting motion before they'll turn off the lights. You could even throw in that ultrasound virtual switch into the mix and make sure that's off as well. And then that will be really solid to make sure that the lights only turn off if no one's in the room. In Home Assistant, there's just an extra step that you have to do. So in Home Assistant, you have both triggers for the motion sensors to stop detecting motion. And that's all you really had to do in SmartThings. But in Home Assistant, you have to add the condition yourself. So the conditions are that both of them have stopped detecting motion. That will make it so both motion sensors have to stop detecting motion before the lights will turn off. And again, you could throw that virtual switch in here as well. All right, hopefully that was helpful in combining ultrasound, fading off the lights, and having multiple motion sensors so your motion lights stay on if you're in the room and it doesn't annoy anyone in your house. And I did another video on the main channel, if you haven't seen it already, about some more tips for motion lights, and I'll link it down below. Thanks for watching.